So hello, hopefully I am now live and I'll keep going, I'll pretend I am until someone tells me I'm not. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. Hi Melanie from Chile, Norfolk, not too far from you. I agree, very chilly today, all of a sudden. Um, thank you Sue for buying my cards. Um, hello Esfos, uh, my pleasure. And I saw at the top, um, Sarah, if you are here Sarah, don't worry if you need to leave. And if anyone needs to leave, um, then obviously I will not find it at all rude. Um, we are doing uh, a, I, I'm sort of choosing a, a scene which is a little bit um, just about squeezing into one of the October sort of challenges. So apologies for the dark screen here, it doesn't show up well against my lights. Um, there is a link to this reference, this is my Pinterest, uh, there's a link to this in the description of today's video. This is um, the free horse show, horseshoes, uh, which is a pub slash inn uh, in Groverley near near St Neots. Um, the the people at my workshop yesterday will know it well because we did a slightly different view of it, a front on view. Um, and uh, what I'm what I'm shoehorning this into is Sketcher Joey's History Tober. So um, the Inktober prompts, many of you may have noticed if you're joining in, are um, sometimes they require a little bit of thinking, a little bit of, sort of cognition to get um, maybe a scene that you're really comfortable with. That certainly is the case for me. Um, so I've, my head's a bit tired and I thought we will change to doing something I'm more comfortable with. And things like Sketch Joey's History Tober um, are filled with things which you can make a bit more architectural. And today is um, a hotel. So I'll write hashtag hotel at the top um, and I will write history toba as well. So we can, uh, well, anyone joining can at least hopefully get a little bit of an idea. And that is set up uh, by Sketcher Joey, who you can find on Instagram. Um, so, Let's see what happens. I'm just going to, actually today, it's, it's a little bit of an awkward perspective. So I guess I'm going to dive in, but I'm actually going to dive in to a thumbnail or two. And just to get some of these shapes and the idea of the, the perspective um, and the composition as well, uh, which is not necessarily the simplest thing in this scene. The, the reference is rather zoomed out. Um, so I'm going to zoom it in a little bit and just see how that sort of fits in my little thumbnail. And if you've got the reference open, do get the reference open, do sketch along, of course. You see it's lots of these overlapping sort of stacked up um, parts of the house. And in the front, so Dean, hello Dean and Julia. Dean and Julia will know at the front is a funny little dragon, um, which we'll see if we make something of uh, from today's sketch or if we just leave it as sort of nice and simple. Uh, and maybe just, just, it's got a nice little touch of red in there. So maybe that's just something we'll suggest going forward. There's also a, a confusing flag, which is kind of in the way of our view. Don't know if that really fits with with the scene today or um, if I move it or just leave it out. And there we can kind of see how it's building up, but this is way too big in my scene. So I'm gonna try again, another quick thumbnail. And this time I'm actually just gonna make it much simpler I'm really just aim to see how the scale will work if I really keep it much smaller within my scene. So this time really trying to get that feel of it being a, a relatively distant object. And there's a horrible sort of bay window here. Um, you know, <laughs> in, so Dean and Julia, I'm sure won't mind me saying we were all together yesterday in, in St. Neots in a, a um, uh, in our workshop and um, I think it's Julia who chose some lovely bay windows to to sketch and together we discovered bay windows are always a bit awkward um, so we'll see how they work for me today um, or if I just ignore them and pretend it's not a bay window. Again I've got that a bit too big. Um, I'm going to stop thumbnailing there though. Um, I'm going to stop trying to get the shapes. I'm just going to work out a little bit of the shadow going on. Um, and see how that makes me just a little bit of a reference for later when I add the colour. Um, just thinking where's the most important shadow. I, I, I will get something suggesting the dragon in. I will get the flow of this road coming in. I think 
when we think about the composition, our focal point. So actually, if I think about it sensibly, this needs to shift over because I want the focal point to be around here. It will spiral out, flowing up that road. So that's what I need to do. Shift everything over, make a little feature of these wires coming over just to fill what will be the space over here. So hopefully that makes sense. So uh, Susie, you can't see the picture. Um, so I've not got the picture up here, but if you check the description um, of this video, you'll be able to open it on my Pinterest um, and then hopefully everything will make sense. Um, and oh, you also got a nice nice message there. I'm really glad, uh, that's really lovely to, to see Susie that you, you sort of like the style and approach. And hi Kat, of course, finishing for the last quarter final. Yes, <laughs> hopefully, I might have to rush the end, we'll see. Um, and with that, um, I'll ask a question actually while I'm sketching. Um, I'll ask a question and a favour. So if you're watching, please hit the like button. It will really help um, draw other people in, get more people watching. Um, also, uh, have just let me know in the chat, have you been taking part in Inktober? How have you found it? Um, any particularly fun prompts, any particularly challenging prompts that you're looking at in the next week? Maybe we can all sort of crowdsource some ideas on how we might approach those more challenging prompts. And here we go, just gonna start. So my finished picture is gonna go in this kind of area. And I'm gonna start by pushing it way to the left. Like I said here, this, this needs to all come over. And there's a few issues with the proportions of buildings here. So I'm gonna try and learn from my mistakes. And I'm, I'm using a, an ultra extra fine nib today, and that's gonna let me make a lot of mistakes and then come back and hopefully correct it with some slightly bolder lines if I need to. Um, and so just getting all these little bits in the front. Hopefully we can do this kind of relaxed sketch today, um, get a little bit more detail in, uh, whilst just slowly sort of plodding around and keeping it loose, but plodding around, getting a little bit more sense of the, the place in. So we've got lots of awkward roofs, so we can use our pen just to imagine that we're drawing the lines in to get these little segments of roof in, get about the right sort of line uh, angle. So this should just be sloping down a little bit. It's a little bit higher than eye level. Um, this basically goes all the way up. It's hidden by that awkward uh, telephone pole, but uh, you can sort of imagine, I think for lines like that, you can imagine what, what's probably happening. And then come down and one thing is, is this side of their roof symmetrical? It's tempting to think it is, but it's actually not. Maybe that's one place I was going wrong in both of these, I made it symmetrical. But when we spend a little bit longer looking, we can see it's not quite symmetrical. Um, there's quite a steep angle to this roof. And then this comes down. So this is much shorter than this and it ends higher. I think I was getting that wrong in my thumbnails and getting a bit confused as a result. Because once you've got those sort of relationships not quite working, it's hard to work out why unless you find that kind of underlying problem. Over here, got this little sort of outhouse bit. And this is already just feeling much better than these. These are a bit rushed, which is okay. Um, but. Uh, just going a bit slower and using these mistakes to look at what's happening here um, is really helping me. So, can use a bit of comparative measuring here. I can see in the reference of anyone who's joined, the reference is linked in the description on my Pinterest. Um, I have loads of references on my Pinterest, by the way. Uh, most of my tutorials have a reference up there. Um, and what I'm doing is just finding, where does this end? I can tell by checking where it hits this roof and it kind of hits it at the peak there. Then we've got steep bit and a steep bit coming down. Then we come down and we come to this horrible bay window. So let's see, let's, um, what we'll do, I'm gonna give the bay window a go and I'm gonna accept that it may uh, may not work because bay windows, especially this is really now tiny, bay windows are really awkward. If anyone has a good way of getting these bay windows in, um, then let me know. And Dean, yes, I did get my coffee. 
they'd, they'd been looking for me in the wrong place, um, but they very kindly made me a new coffee before I left. Uh, so again, for anyone who's joined, Dean, Julia, and, and quite a few others, we were all in St. Neots yesterday doing a fun workshop. Well, I thought it was fun, but I, I would say that. Uh, we were doing a workshop nonetheless, um, where everyone worked hard and produced some great art. And I got a coffee, so I was happy. There we go. So this this bay window is actually it's okay. It's it's uh, there's something not quite right here, and I think it's because I had angled this wrong. It's actually only just above eye level, so it's basically a horizontal line. The eye level is going to be about here, and it's going to be a flat line going through all the scenes. So if I angle this up or down, it's going to feel odd. I think that's where I'd gone wrong, and just making it bold and flattening it out, and it's probably worked. Um, here we've got a, a silly dragon. Now I've drawn this dragon a few times. Drew, drew it yesterday, drew it the day before. I saw eight people draw it for me as well. So I know what it looks like and I'm, I enjoyed it. So I'm actually going to invent it here. Um, and it's also really useful and things like this are really useful because you notice how this kind of fluffy, it's a, draw, it's a, a dragon actually made of straw but it covers the entire bottom of the house. So I don't have to actually um, work out where the bottom of the house is. I can just draw a, a looping structure. It makes life much easier to find things like that. That's why lawns are great. So you can draw little sort of grassy structures instead of actually having to draw the bottom, actually having to work out exactly where it ends. So use those things to your advantage in a scene. That's my... Um, my tip for today. Now I've been focusing a lot on this. Let me just do these two cars and then I'll have a little sketching break and check the comments. <laughs> so, oh, is it Histober, not History Tober? So, I've written History Tober up here, but apparently Sketcher Joey's uh, challenge is actually just Histober. So, apologies for that. If you check out um, Sketcher Joey's profile, though, you'll definitely find it. Which pen is this? Says ostensibly this is um, the Platinum Three Seven Seven Six, which I think Tracy's kindly said, and it's yes, it's not the it's the ultra fine or the ultra extra fine uh, nib that I've got on it. Um, Melanie, I've missed a few uh, with all my my sketching. I've missed a few things, but Melanie really enjoying Ink It makes you think, and uh, yeah, it really does make you think. And I too agree. I love seeing how other people interpret prompts. Often it it makes me think, why on earth didn't I do that? someone will find something which just creates a really great image uh, and I'm like oh yeah that would have been good um Tracy am I still trying out organic vermilion I've not this is still Scarlet Lake but Scarlet Lake is from Winsor Newton for people who don't know organic vermilion is the same pigment but from Daniel Smith I will be trying it when I've run out of my um Scarlet Lake Matthew did some toadstools with soluble inks for, for Inktober that's a great idea and practicing your Christmas cards today that's brilliant as well. Um, if people be, let me know in the comments. Someone emailed me uh, to ask if I could do a, a sort of Christmas card tutorial, which I'm happy to do. Um, I would be interested to hear if that is something people would find useful. And if so, what would you like to be in it? Would you just like the sketching? Um, is it that people want to know how to get cards printed? Um, what is it that you would like in that kind of tutorial? My default would be to do a few sort of postcard sketches um, of wintry scenes and to show how I add like a Christmas effect to um, what might otherwise be a not so Christmassy image. Um, so if that sounds good to you, then I'll do that. Um, if not, or if you want something else, just let me know in the chat. Uh, it'd be useful again to crowdsource some ideas. Um, there we go. Now I will continue. So again, just using all these sort of relationships between shapes to work out how to finish this off. And if you look at the car crash, which happened over here, this is much better. This is a much happier, much more reliable version of the scene. Now there are errors you might notice. So if we look here, this is too high, but because all the lines are very soft, I can actually just bring that down. Now I've got a bigger wall, but that's okay. This doesn't make any sense. This was supposed to be the road sign, which is too high now, but there's like a bush there. So I can basically, because the line's soft, I could cover it up with a bit of color 
no one will ever know. All right, well, you, you'll all know, but I think it won't be so obvious. And I can bring this roadside down. Of course, you can just avoid all this, this fuss and having to make things up and edit by using pencil. The disadvantage with that is I think when I've done a pencil line, I'm much more prone to then do a very firm, hard pen line. So I like the mistakes. I like having to work things out. And I like the spontaneity you get from jumping in in that slightly more scary way. There's also something here not quite right. Ah, it's because I've not done a, a line down here. This side is pointing that way. And then there's a side in shadow over here. And I'm just going to hatch that in because that hatching immediately gives that shape. And I would recommend if you do get lost in a scene like that, like I just got very lost here, like what's what's gone wrong? Just giving yourself a really quick reference of light and dark will, in in a lot of times, it will really quickly just show you what was going on and it helps reorientate you for later. Now, to give myself a little break from all this architectural measuring, um, I'm gonna just get myself these lovely distant trees. And they're in the distance, so they're gonna be soft and they're gonna be very loose. There's only enough room for those two, and that's fine. We've also got things like the flagpole. The flagpole's actually coming up sort of here, which is a really awkward place for it. So I wonder if I move it out here. So I move it to the side like this, and I make it a little bit taller. Suddenly it can actually be a frame to the scene. It's now pushing in. And we'll see. And I'd appreciate other people's thoughts. If you've got the reference open, again, the reference is linked down below in the description. If you've got the reference open, let me know um, how would you deal with this um, this flag and this flagpole. I may regret opening it out because now it implies I should paint the actual colours of it. Um, but but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, oh, a lot's going on. Has anyone ever tried sketching lines in waterproof black and then doing water soluble in a different colour? Um, yeah, I've done that a few times. It's really it works really nicely. So, um, uh, so yeah, I, I do recommend doing that kind of thing. Um, and I can see someone. I just lost it on my my chat. It's gone gone up. Too many people talking, which is always great. Um, I'm using carbon black ink. I think someone was talking about that. And for me, it works really well. It's never blocked one of my pens. But if your pen dries out. Um, there is a risk of it blocking. One tip is if you've got a pen like this and it has a screw, that's very airtight. Not 100% airtight, but it's much harder for it to um, much harder for it to, to dry out. When you copy a picture, do you think about perspective lines? Um, is that I assume that's talking to me, Susie. So yes, uh, do I think about perspective lines? That's a good good question. Um, Yes and no. I think about where it must be flat. So I, I, I was talking earlier about this must be the horizon line. And if a lot of it's just in like muscle memory and it just happens, but sometimes I go, ah, this isn't working. And then I have to work out where where my perspective line should be. Um, I think for something like this, this is mostly a one point perspective scene, but there are probably well, there's definitely elements of two point with all of these different planes coming in and out. Um, there's probably an element of three point perspective vertically as well, but that is something that we often ignore and I'm going to mostly ignore today, if not entirely ignore, we'll see. Um, again, I'm just exaggerating the height of these poles just to give a bit more height to the scene because having squished it, I've noticed it's very in this corner. If I give a little bit more height here and a really big telephone pole coming up here, I'll have room for a really, hopefully, really lovely sky. Going back, we've just got these um, trees and things. It's time probably just to just get the flow of this road so we understand where we're heading. And it kind of goes up and across. And then I've done one of the cardinal perspective errors. So my pavement's gone above the horizon line. There is a bit of a hill at the end, but not that much of a hill. So we just bring that down and it should be about there because it just goes up a hill. So at the end, it should feel like this, this street is slightly higher than down here. Um, and it is, and it's just about on and above the horizon line. Then as we come down, this side can just flow out and it kind of comes straight down towards us, wibbling and wobbling. 
And then as we go along, what I want to do is match. So I've got this bush here, which ends there. I want to match a bush on the other side to make sure that this street here, see how by matching the bottom here, bottom there, this street now feels flat. And then I can sort of fill in all these gaps with the, the many, many trees, which there are up here. And again, probably this tree will act as a frame. We've got a nice sort of uh, little uh, uh, composition here um, and probably just leave this blank. We might extend, extend it out a little bit. Um, we'll see. It depends if I want to include this telephone pole and all these wires. But if I leave it there, I'm, I'm pretty flexible for what can happen later. Um, Adam says, what's the size of my Lamy Safari? So this isn't a Lamy Safari, but my Lamy Safaris are mostly fine or extra fine. I've got one medium and that's a little bit too bold for me, unfortunately. Um, the Inkspired Life, the flag kind of acts like an end focal point to scene. Yeah, that's, I think that's what I'm trying to say with my calling it like a frame. It kind of, it stops there, doesn't it? And it, it's something to look at, but if we leave no color past that point, it kind of pushes you inwards. Um, Matthew, Christmas card tutorial will be very helpful. Different scenes and how to paint snow. Cool. Well, we will do that. And then if they come up particularly well, I'll have some more Christmas cards. <laughs> so that sounds great. What I'll do, I'll do a Christmas card tutorial in the next couple of weeks, hopefully, um, where we'll look at, um, I'll do them on postcards. So it's how to make those kind of postcard size cards. Um, so that if you want to just hand make lots, lots of um, simple kind of scenes, because if you're going to hand make cards, they're going to have to be simple scenes. Um, otherwise, you'll be doing it for for months, trying to create lots and lots of cards. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll do that. That sounds like a great idea. Okay, so interested to hear from from people if you think um, much more is needed here. What I'm going to do, my, my reference is currently zoomed in a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to try and zoom it out and see if I want to include a little bit more over here. And I think I probably will actually. If I look at it, bring it out a little bit. I think actually it would be fun. Let's just do that. This will give us uh, one more thing to include. And what I've immediately done is drawn the uh, telephone pole coming down like that, which I didn't mean to do. So I'm going to have to kind of cover that dodgy line, that very straight line in my bush. And hopefully that will do. We'll, we'll work out if that's enough later. And actually have the, t instead of having the telephone pole come out here, which will show up with the, I've gone wrong with this line. I just move it over and make it a little bit, sort of suggest a bit of vertical perspective, make it a little bit wonky. And that will draw the eye away from this line, which I uh, did not mean to do, but there we go. And this can either be a bit of vertical perspective, it can just be a characterful telephone pole, one which is sort of leaning over, sort of naturally, and we'll see what, what we end up with. Then here we've got another one which is coming down in front of this wall. And again, do we want to move that? I, want, I don't want it going over here, so I can go it, get it coming up probably where it actually is in the image. And because of the perspective, it needs to be taller than these ones because it's closer to us. So it's going to end significantly higher. And that hopefully is going to give us a really nice big sky that we can work with. So there we go. Have I included the dead body? So for reference, Dean is asking if I've included the dead body. Um, you can't tell in this reference, but this little thing at the front of the, uh, in the front of the pub in is a dragon and it has a, a fake dead body in its mouth. So Dean isn't um, isn't suggesting anything too naughty. <laughs> um, and Paul, yes, Paul, thank you very much um, for purchasing my Christmas cards. I, I did get your order. They are stacked up, um, ready to hopefully get posted tomorrow. So they shouldn't be too long until they're with you. And thank you very much again for getting them. Um, for anyone else who wants some Christmas cards, I have about 10 sets of Christmas cards left uh, and they are up on my Etsy. Uh, there is a link at the top of this chat, I think pinned in this chat. That is going to be the, the mainstay of my line work, all done with a, an ultra extra fine pen. So we can come back later with an extra fine pen 
um, and make sure the lines bolder. And now I'm going to move on and just add a little bit of colour. Now this scene shouldn't need too much colour because there's lots of lines. The more lines you have, the less colour you tend to have. Um, I'm also going to not shill these brushes, I don't sell them, um, but the, these brushes by Pana are very affordable and I'm actually really starting to like them. They're, they're made with densified wood, with soft wood, a little bit more sustainable than um, hardwood, but then they treat them to make them uh, as, or they, they say more uh, long lasting than a hardwood handle. They feel nice, they look nice, um, and they work really nicely. So if you want to, I don't even know where they sell them actually, but if you want to get some pan art brushes, then uh, I would recommend it. They do they do work rather nicely for me. Um, at least the flaps, the, the, the rounds I found a little bit too small for my liking, a little bit too long. Um, I quite like the mop, more moppy kind of round brushes. I'm also going to have a bit of fun. This uh, this so far is cobalt blue, cobalt turquoise. Um, I've got some lavender I've been playing with, and it gives a very lovely kind of. Um, it's a slightly granular, uh, slightly opaque colour, but it gives a really lovely soft feel, soft like wintry, sunny feel. Hopefully you can tell in the image there as I add it in. It just it's just soft and, and nice, just slightly less in your face and happy than the cobalt colours. It's working quite nicely for me in my more wintry mood of sketches. Um, oh, lots to lots to uh, catch up on in the chat. Very active today. So hi, hello, Anu, Anurad, Anurada. Uh, thank you for joining. Glad you enjoy enjoying it so far. Um, Virginia, bye bye. If you've not gone already, thank you for joining. Um, yes, please to Christmas cards. <laughs> Good. Lots of people saying we'll do a Christmas card tutorial. So don't worry, we'll definitely do a Christmas card tutorial. That will be good fun. I'll do my, my next uh, plea. If you're here and you are enjoying yourself, please hit the like button. It will really help um, sort of YouTube recommend um, sort of to more people. So please do that if you're enjoying yourself. Um, what I'm doing now, I'm just dragging that sky down. Got a little bit of indigo. We've got quite a lot of shadows coming along this side of the scene. And I'm going to use that same just really soft indigo just in these shadows. And I've got my nice little uh, thumbnail where I decided where the shadows are earlier. Um, and then before that's dry, I'm going to switch to a small size six round brush and start finding some of these slightly warmer colors. So this for me is probably going to be mostly based around quinacridone sienna and quinacridone deep gold, two very similar colors, but using them together for me, you tends to sort of give a nice subtle variation. And I quite like the sort of exaggeration of the warmth in this scene. And then hopefully, just by bringing it through some of these shadows, it's just going to blend and merge. And I, we'll get a bit of a bloom up here. So we'll see what happens with that. And there we go. That's already, I feel, sort of just coming to life a little bit. Going to immediately jump in with some greens. Um, I've just got a bit of green gold in the bottom of my palette here, which I'll use. Got a tiny bit of green Appetite Genuine in there as well. And maybe I'll just use that green Appetite Genuine in these, these trees where it's definitely more sort of deep and moody, isn't it? And again, we've got this frame. So I'm going to use this telephone pole as a kind of frame. Um, I'll leave this white for now. We need something uh, not painted. So we'll leave that not painted and see what that feels like. And a little bit more shadow up here. And I wonder about painting the roof or not. Um, I'm going to just splash a little bit of water into my road, lift out a little bit. That's got very wet. Let's lift out a little bit, get some textures. Probably just control this bloom a little bit, pull it down a tiny bit. And I can also, you can control blooms by actually touching in another colour that you want there. And that will push back. Ooh. I'll do it with cobalt blue. That should hopefully have, there we go. That's working a little bit better. So that will kind of push back the uh, the blooming out colour. 
maybe even need a little bit more. Yeah, that hopefully that will do. Can use a bit more down there. And just do a few more deeper touches. And I might just have to leave that, see what see what's gonna happen when that's dry. And I can make more decisions about the roofs and, and things later. We'll do a few splashes up here, extend the sky up. There you go, maybe that's something to do, isn't it? Just soften some of those splashes and that extended sky gives a little bit more uh, symmetry across the image. Anything else anyone else would do at this time. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have a, a little look around it. And I think we're good to see what happens. And I think I'll just dry this. I like these, these blooms all blending and merging. It's quite an abstract sort of distance. Um, so we'll see what that looks like. I'm going to have to use the hairdryer. Um, unfortunately, hairdryers do flatten things a lot, so we might lose some of the magic here. So I would recommend not using a hairdryer, except um, if you have a specific time pressure. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do, and let's see what happens. And there we are. So it's not flattened too much actually, and the drying has really brought out, I don't know how well you can see on, on the on the uh, video, but it's really brought out the, the green appetite genuine has a very lovely granulating effect. Um, and this has kept these nice sort of swirling abstract colours, which is just the kind of thing that I like. Didn't mean it to happen, but um, that is what I enjoy out of watercolours, things happening which you didn't mean um, that work. So I'm going to just work around. I think the first thing I'm going to actually do is focus on some darks. So I'm going to use some indigo, a little bit of quinacridone sienna. So basically deep orange, deep blue will get you a nice neutral if you mix them together. And with that, I'll just pick out a little bit more of where I see dark areas. So that'd be our, our shadows under our, our rooftops. It's a little too warm for me, so a bit of indigo should neutralize it, bring it down, that's a bit better. And I'm just gonna sort of pop it in to start with. And it's looking a bit rough, but then we can just soften that down. So soften the edges, move it around a little bit. And hopefully we're kind of just creating a bit more shape to things. Not sure, not sure if that's working or not. I'll come back in then with some bolder, warm colours, so a little bit of our quinacridones again. And they also can be used for shadows, so I can just get some of these other shadow areas just by using a deeper layer of that warm colour. So down here, for example, that's a shadow, which we can do like that. Just going to soften some of that out avoid too many hard edges coming around and a nice touch which I increasingly do and it's a bit of a sort of just a bit of stylistic nonsense really but I, I rather like how a bit of cobalt blue even a bit of cobalt turquoise kind of lifts shadows if things are looking a bit flat like here looking a bit flat and you just touch that blue in it moves around it granulates creates a little cauliflower or something and for me it just makes it a bit more interesting and I'm going to just focus again, just creating a bit more sort of shape in a few places. So getting shadow under our dragon, a bit more depth into these trees. Again, if anyone's joined since I started, the uh, the reference is linked in the description, so you you can find the sort of full quality reference. I'm actually painting from my Pinterest today, um, and this is a uh, dubiously. Uh, attached to Sketcher Joey's history or Histotober or History Tober. So the idea is sketching scenes which have some kind of historical, not relevance, but historical hint. And today is hotel. So I'm sketching like an oldish feeling in from near my town. Can I just touch in some more 
specific colours in a couple of places. Just in a few places. I really don't want to overdo this. It's a very small image. Um, but with all that ink, actually, I started off um, adding a lot of colour. So I need to keep going so that I don't um, now underdo it. With lots of ink, for me, there's two options. Either you have to paint a lot, create a lot of contrast to not lose the, the watercolours, or you just do a really gentle wash. And I've definitely gone past that gentle wash stage. So we're in for the long haul of that sort of slower, more specific painting style for a little bit, which is a really nice change sometimes from just really quick, really quick sketches. Can find little drops of shadow even in our negative space. Often you have negative space, but just giving it that tiny shadow can make it feel more purposeful. Instead of forgotten, it's a sort of decision you've made. There we go. What have people done today for Inktober? I'm not even sure what the Inktober sketch is today. Um, so let me know in the uh, in the comments. I, I remember thinking it was quite hard and that's something I thought, you know, this is an excuse to go and try something else like this uh, hotel themed sketch. But uh, what have people who aren't me done? Perhaps braver people than me or more uh, creative people have managed to find a way to do the history, to the uh, Inktober sketch today. Now, I'm going to get the red into this dragon. So this dragon has got little red bubbles to it. It's a little dragon made out of straw. I'm not going to, hopefully not overdo it, but just enough to make him have a bit of punch and come forward. I'm going to do a few splashes at this stage as well. These greens can just sort of join up the image, hopefully. And again, into this sky, we'll do a few splashes. There we go. And I'm not sure what else needs to be done right now. I think it might be a case of let this dry, get the um, get the inks out. I've just found this. This needs to be darker to make sense. Maybe this needs to be darker to make sense as well. But beyond that, I think this is a time to restructure and see really what's happening in our what's happening in our image. So I'm going to just get the hairdryer out. And I'll be back in a few seconds to add a bit more ink. So whilst I think about what I'm going to do, I'll just catch up on the chat again. So Raven Wolf, hi, great to have you here for the first time. Thanks for joining. Um, Inspired life, like the white areas on the roof. Yeah, I wonder if I've overdone that little bit of shadow, but um, we'll see. I think when the bold pen's added, we'll get that white feeling back again. Tracy's being very kind, saying it looks stunning. And the Inspired life then says, maybe bold in the outline of the roof a bit. I agree. <laughs> um, looks lovely already, says Susie. What size brush? This was a size six round, this. And I was using before a flat brush, which is approximately a half inch flat. Um, Mary says, beautiful colors, thank you very much. Um, doing, uh, Inspired Life doing the uh, architecture, yeah, that's a really good challenge. And um, Melanie and Nina doing the Inktober Brunt is dagger, pumpkin stab with a dagger, and a creepy dagger with a skull for a handle. They sound like good, uh, good ideas. And Andrew says, how are you feeling about the Twisby Diamond 580 at this point? Um, I've I've come to really enjoy it, Andrew. So I tend to now use my 3776 for like the detailed bit at the beginning, the uncertain bit. And now I'm gonna switch to my Diamond 580 for the sort of structuring again of the image, getting a bit of a bolder line. The weakness of it um, and of the 3776 is that they're not super flexible. They don't produce like a huge dynamic line, not as much at least as the safaris, which are much cheaper pens. Uh, but they can produce nice controlled lines. So I'm almost using my fountain pens as slightly more flexible fine liners by using two of them. 
and for me that's that's actually been um, rather a nice uh, rather a nice sort of change it's it's been an enjoyable way of using them getting hopefully getting the most out of them so here just coming round with bolder lines hopefully not too bold there's a risk it's just quite a small image there is a real risk of me making this too bold um i think it's okay it's coming around don't need to spell out everything but just trying to get some of the key areas coming forward again don't want to be too strict and straight with my lines anyway uh, anyway either that's what i meant to say um but just say enough and just coming forward and coming forward so now these things at the front these lines need to be the boldest so I just add an extra bit of pressure to my paper to get those lines a bit bolder Ooh. and I picked up a little bit of paper on the end of my nib and you can see the line went really bold so normally if you notice something is happening which is a bit odd with your pen often the nib will have picked something up and then because it's sucked all that ink out just gonna have to do a little scribble to get it working again. That is the disadvantage of fountain pens compared to fine liners. But also the advantage they do these kind of unexpected things. Can be fun, can be frustrating. Get these windows a bit bolder now that everything else has sort of come forward. Back here. That's going a bit too bold for me now. So I'm gonna change back to the 3706. And there we go, a bit of a finer line into the distance. Hopefully that will let me just get some of these trees, give them a little bit of interesting texture. can even give them a sort of, there's not much going on in them, there's a lot of line work over here. So we can actually give them these kind of branching patterns inside. A lot going on in this tree, probably too much, but I might try and just flatten it with a bit of hatching, get a bit more shape and shadow in there. Having done that, opens the doorway to do a bit more hatching in a few places. Generally get a little bit more texture. Just come around, do the same in this grass, do the same here. And now I'm just gonna, again, move around and do a little bit of hatching and things. Um, or a few, few bits of color palette as autumnal feel. It does, those, um, those quinacridones really do a nice job of giving that kind of autumnal glow. Could you quickly list the colours and brands in your palette today? Already done for you. If you just click on the supplies link in the description um, and go to the watercolours, that my current palette is all listed there. There's also on that website, which is urbansketch.co.uk, I have a blog post about all of my colours um, and the rationale for all of them and any changes you might have noticed between uh, videos I've tried to explain. Um, Love the bright shades and the sky is always so lovely. Well, thank you very much. This sky has worked very well. I, I, I'm happy with this one. They don't always work, but this one has worked. Um, what kind of paper is that? This paper is Hanmuller Anniversary Edition um, 425 gram per square meter. Got a light texture to it. I rather enjoy this paper. Um, it's on the block as well. So it's all gummed down and it keeps everything nice and controlled. You can see I apply a lot of water and there's very little buckling. So it's rather good, nice paper to use for the kind of techniques I like employing. I'm going to find a bit more sort of going on here. I'm going to suggest the writing in the building here. Little doodle. Um, just find there's lots and lots of uh, kind of black marks on the walls, which I think, can't tell for definite, but I think are... Um, drain pipes and things and I think they add quite a lot to the feel of the image so I'm just going to try and get those in. Got our dragon of course to bring forwards and he can come really dark hopefully and keep going and going and going just peter out over there. There's some areas back here I think to flatten with some hatching I'm going to just have to keep moving around here because I don't want to overdo things. But it does feel like it needs a little bit of extra work. So a little bit of hatching here and there, a little bit of texture here and there. And then just I need to sort of stop and have a look as well. We've got kind of an absence of texture in the road. I think even just little 
gentle marks like that. Probably doing quite a lot. That, I think that worked quite well. And I'm going to just explain a little bit more of this roof. Just doing a few textures on the roofs will probably just hopefully help with the perspective of them and also just link them up a little bit. Suddenly if all these roofs have got the same kind of texture going on we understand uh, in theory, uh, my idea is we understand they're all the same thing. So anything else anyone would do immediately be interesting to uh, to hear other people's thoughts. There's a lot going on. I think that's the bulk of the of the image really done, which is good because we've got 15 minutes left at most uh, when the rugby's starting and I need to get watching. <laughs> um, and Andrew says the uh, AMS, ASMR scratching. Yes, this is a very scratchy pen. The 3776 is a very scratchy pen. I like it. I like that feedback, um, but not everyone does. The, the Diamond 580 is a much less, much smoother pen. And uh, so swings and roundabouts with my pen selection today. Um, I'm going to I'm going to do something a bit cheeky. I wonder what people will think of this. So bear with me. I'm going to have a little bit of a play with some Posca pens on this. I've got um, a couple of blues, red and a white. Um, texture on the road, yes. And I'll, I'm going to do a tiny bit more watercolour, and some of that will be texture on the road as well. Um, but with these, I've got a black somewhere I might use, but I pr it's probably too heavy. With these, I'm going to just, what you get is a nice kind of texture on top. And they have a little sheen, because they're opaque, they have a little sheen. So you can really bring out little highlights. And it, it's something that I've had a little bit of fun recently just playing with. You can suddenly just find little details, little bits of extra noise going on. Doesn't work for every sketch and you know, there's a risk of me overdoing it. It's just an experiment at the moment, but um, I've enjoyed having a bit of fun with them. So let's have another bit of fun here. We can make our red chimneys. We could do little suggestions going up of red on here. Then just swap to an another color. And here you can get little highlights again. Red becomes blue. Getting little highlights going up our telephone wires. Maybe even this as well. Little flex in the windows. Do need to be very careful not to overdo this stylistic nonsense, as I'll call it. But until you overdo it, sometimes you don't learn how much you can get away with. And I do like the effect, the kind of layered effect. I mentioned it, I think, in the last live that I was going to start trying to. Um, employ this kind of idea and it's worked in a few sketches I've done I've had I've just not really pushed the limits of it and uh, maybe posh out pop out the flag with a punch of color yeah it, that could be a nice place to add a punch of color you're quite right so let's see just want to get a few of these highlights and then doing that it's given me a chance to have a look as well and notice places where actually I want a really bold line here this didn't make any sense. Just I'm looking and thinking, oh, look, I'm missing all the contrast here and here. So we get these really bold lines in using my slightly bolder fountain pen. Same here, just get that boldness that suggests that, that shadow looming over. Same here. Maybe just the same here as well. I know that's the wrong side for the shadow, but um, I think it works okay. And then coming down, I can press really hard. We'll just keep a little bit of that Posca coming out from underneath. We will cover up a lot of it and hopefully just get these little dabs of light coming through. And here, probably going to have to do two lines. Just being fairly careful. Trying to move my whole arm to keep the line. I don't want it super straight. I also want it to be straightish. I don't want it to, I don't mind it wobbling, but I don't want it going off at an angle. I think that's achieved what I wanted. So we'll do the same just up here, just up here, little suggestion. So we're ready now for telephone wires to come across and then a very good suggestion, little pop of color to come into our flagpole. So I'll start off by actually just making it nice and bold. And that gives me a little zone to add color. So I go back to my size six and I'm gonna do a bit of red, see what that looks like. 
I think it's a Union Jack, uh, but it's folded over, so I can't really tell. But I'm going to do a little bit of red and then a little blue, sort of contrasting, happy, bold, punchy colours. And when you do punches like this, I quite like just letting them splash out. I think that adds to the kind of pop out effect. Um, I'll let you guys be the judge if that works or if it's silly. I mean, it could work and be silly, I suppose. Down here, a few more, let this dragon splash. I mean, the, uh, of course, token invented road marks, exactly the same as everyone who was in my workshop the other day, painting another view of this scene knows I added these same road marks. But again, I just think that adds a, a nice punch of color. I might just do a few splashes of that yellow around as well. So it's not just in one little zone. And then last bit, last but not least, wires, yeah, Matthew says the wires will be good. So hopefully stylistic nonsense is possibly favorite thing I've heard you say. Maybe that should be a title of my, uh, one of my tutorials. I'll see if that gets a uh, good traction. Uh, I think it's important to be aware when you're just doing things which are a bit silly, but it doesn't really matter. Um, definitely lots of things I do are just a bit silly and uh, they are just stylistic and they don't really make any sense, but uh, they're fun. That's why I do them. So I think stylistic nonsense is a good description, therefore, of some of my processes. I always, when I've got wires coming across in important places, uh, I just do a little practice, hopefully try and visualize where it's going to end up. And that helps me feel a little more confident in adding it in and hopefully not just ruining the whole thing, which it can feel like you're going to do when you do big swoops going across. Uh, they're not perfect, but I think they, they've done okay. This one was a bit bold, but um, working okay. And then a last touch of stylistic nonsense, as we're now calling it. Little flecks of blue and things coming from these, across these wires. And a little fleck of, why not, a little fleck of red just across them as well, just in a couple of places. Now, feel free to hate that. But if I don't do it, uh, I'll never know if it was a good idea or not. And with that, I don't know if there's anything else left to do. I could just see if there's any any little touches of light. I can always just add in some little highlights under these shadows. And there's always that point at which you're certain that you're just overworking things and going to regret it. So I think few more random touches, squiggles, textures. And I'll call that done, but I'll, I'll put it to the vote. <laughs> um, what what do you guys think? Is there something else I should add? I'm gonna sign it. So I put my signature now, I, I hide it. I think it's just a fun touch. And then um, a few things I've sold, people have enjoyed having it hidden in as well. So uh, uh, let's call that another bit of stylistic nonsense. So I'll, um, <laughs> There you go, hashtag stylistic nonsense. That'll, that'll help me remember to use that phrase more often. Um, and I'll see, I'll see how it does on the algorithm. Am I adding it to my Etsy? I probably will add it to my Etsy. It's, 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 it's working quite nice. So I'll, I'll probably, I've got a big stash of things that um, I've been doing the last couple of weeks which need to get added. Been a bit over-focused on getting my Christmas cards up on Etsy. Oh, let's, let's uh, shill some more Christmas cards while I'm here. <laughs> so all my Christmas cards are up on Etsy. There's about 10 sets left. So there's a link um, in the description if you want to join it. Um, I probably will add this to my Etsy, yeah. Um, I'll have to wait till it's dry. I don't like just adding everything. It has to feel like it's uh, a good representation, but it, it's looking all right. I just have to think on these marks uh, and decide whether, whether I approve of them. Uh, I think I do. I don't know, what do people think of these 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 funny little marks? If I zoom in a little bit, um, hopefully you'll get a better idea. And you can let me know in the last couple of minutes, what do you think of these little, these kind of Posca pen things, they sit in front, the Posca pen's opaque, and watercolors are, of course, not opaque, watercolors are translucent. So the Posca pen always, especially colored Posca pen, sits on top. And what do you guys think of that? Um, interesting touch, uh, silly touch, fun touch, bad touch, let me know. Um, 
15. So the wires are more interesting than I would have done. Don't be hard on yourself. It's very easy to look at someone else's work. I mean this genuinely, don't be hard on yourself. It is very easy to look at someone else has done something and therefore it's good. When we look at it, um, we only see the bit that we messed up. So when I look at this, I can only see this dark, <laughs> very straight line, which is a, it doesn't make any sense. It's perspectively wrong. It's too bold. Um, but I appreciate you've got a different view because you're not as stuck into it with me. What white was that, Toby? That's a, a Posca. And so Anurad, Anurada, apologies for mispronouncing, is asking what white I added. So Posca pens are acrylic markers. They come in all sorts of colours. I've got um, about 12 colours. Uh, but I think the most fun to play with are the primary colours, the white and the black. Um, they have like metallic colours, which are a bit much for me. Uh, they're a bit too obvious. Um, uh, there are other brands as well. These are just when someone says Posca, it's like when someone says Hoover. Um, that's This is what they, they tend to mean. On the way, Dean says, on the way to St. Neots, noticed how green the wires were. I've never noticed green wires, but um, maybe, uh, maybe I'll ask the council to clean our wires. <laughs> Is the animal made with clouds on purpose? Says Romain. Do you mean this remain if you mean the this this is like a dragon he's, he's made of um bundles of straw um so y yesterday I was in a, a doing a workshop with people we actually did this same uh pub but we we were looking at the front and you can see this much more easily and it is kind of these circular bundles of straw um so yeah it's i've made it if that's what you're talking about i've made it like that um both just as a sort of little, to make it stand out, to make it more obvious, but also because I know I'm cheating. I know what it looks like because I've seen it um, like really uh, up close and for a couple of hours. Slenders is freaked out when I went so dark on the front faces of the buildings. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure what's going to happen. You always have to remember with watercolours, they're going to dry a lot paler than when you add them. So... Um, so, yeah, it, it can often look more scary than it is. I would do one last request for anyone who's still here. And if you haven't pressed the like button, please do hit the like. That'll be really kind. And it will hopefully mean that some people watch this even when we've finished. Um, and I think if there are no other questions in the next few seconds, I will disappear. Um, again, <laughs> apologies for mentioning my Christmas cards again. But if you do fancy some Christmas cards, I've had some printed. They're on my store. They're, there's a message at the top of this chat that you can find a link to them. They're also just on, if you go to tobysketchloose.co.uk, that's where they are. Um, and I will do a Christmas card tutorial. We'll do some postcard size Christmas card images um, as requested earlier on in the chat. And hopefully we'll get that up in the next couple of, uh, next couple of weeks, not next couple of days, next couple of weeks. And with that, Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Um, if you have a go at this image, don't forget to tag Sketch a Joey. And also, if you'd like to tag me, then do or send it to me on Instagram or via email, anything you like. And have a good rest of your Sunday. And for anyone who's watching the rugby, uh, enjoy yourselves. Let's see what happens.